Um, my name is Leszek Dąbrowski. I was born in Poland and brought up in Liverpool, where I went to the art school. And much of my work has been, earlier work, has been very much connected to my Polish roots. Um, I was born in Sandomierz, which is a medieval town, a very beautiful medieval town in eastern Poland. And as I say, much of my work has been very much connected with um, my town, Sandomierz. This is a painting which I have uh, finished recently and is of, again of a medieval marketplace, this time in the southwestern Poland, uh, Wrocław, a very famous um, Polish town which has had a very checkered history, but a, a, a city centre full of medieval buildings and almost like a toy town. And this is a painting seen of a fragment of the city um, uh, at night. More recently, I've been um, visiting Andalusia in southern Spain, where I uh, fell in love with a number of white hilltop towns. And the work has been very much concerned to do uh, about the landscape and the history of the place, the colours, the textures, the smells of that area. And we see two examples of here of um, one of Vejer, which is a white hilltop town uh, south of Cadiz, and this is on the way to Sierra Norte, the mountains near Seville. I was very much involved um, looking at the landscape, um, looking at the colours and looking at interesting features in the, in the landscape which I um, came to know really well. Again, this is a painting of a very ancient building in the middle of nowhere. Um, in fact, this uh, is a scene in um, Belgium, in, in near the coast, in Flanders, old Flanders, and it shows a typical Belgian um, building from the Middle Ages. And I was very, very taken with the um, proportions, this, uh, these extraordinary proportions of the building surrounded by virtual emptiness. This painting shows or features the house that I was born in, a small thatched cottage on the riverbank in Sandomierz. And when I was visiting um, San, the Sandomierz uh, a few years ago, I noticed that the vegetation um, has grown but withered away in the hot sun, and um, a lady would come every day uh, feeding the birds. So this is a painting of her, and in fact, you, have, so you can see two faces in one, because I didn't really know her very well. I imagined her to have a number of personalities. This is a painting of the waterfront um, on, in Liverpool, on Merseyside, and on the landing stage, um, I saw a young lady sleeping or resting, uh, waiting perhaps for the ferry to go across the Mersey, and here she is fast asleep uh, under the canopy of quite extraordinary buildings. Hello, I'm Wendy Morton Jones Dabrowska, and I have been painting and devoted to art since the age of eight. It's been my uh, passion all my life. This triptych was done at the end of an academic year of teaching history of art. And I'd, um, when you teach, you, you sort of absorb and store so much information that I literally had to expel it at the end of the academic year. And the first painting, uh, Bonjour Monsieur Cézanne, was like trying to bury all the information underground, but laying in the garden relaxing, I could still see and, and think of the history of art, hence the architectural buildings in the background. The second one is a continuation of that because all the, all the things that I taught came through my mind. Um, Monsieur Pugin, um, some Lely fabric, Picasso, the Guggenheim Museum, the Kiriko Bridge, etc. And the last one was when I went on holiday and eventually, uh, to Italy, and eventually I sort of shed, shed the history of art from the academic year by saying goodbye, Mr. Hockney. It was hello, Mr. Hockney, but actually it's goodbye, Mr. Hockney. <laughs> These two paintings are when we, from when we first came to live in Lincolnshire, and we, we've, we live um, in Boston on the coast. 
And I had never seen a horizon before. And on going, on going for walks, I had never been to a place where there were no people because I came up from London. Um, so, when I, it's so Chance Encounter is the lower painting and it is literally a, seeing a person is an amazing, was an amazing thing. But I did notice that there was some litter left. So the, uh, there were, that was evidence that people uh, did go there. And the top one, uh, I was also overwhelmed and stunned by the beauty of the countryside because the horizons are very important to artists. The beautiful skies, the big open skies and the wonderful colors you get in them. And then going into the town, it was such a contrast seeing uh, young women dressed in London type fashions and as if they lived separately from the countryside rather than integrating in the countryside. So it's like two different worlds. Cooling sewing machines stock a large range of sewing machines from £95 to the latest computerised embroidery machines with software which allows you to design your own logos or motifs. Cooling sewing machines also offer free tuition on all their machines and provide a full range of haberdashery. On top of this, they provide an authorised repair service with a wide range of spare parts and accessories. With over 60 machines and overlockers in stock and with all the big names all under one roof, why go elsewhere? Cooling sewing machines, 53 High Street, Lincoln. Hello, my name is Tina James and I'm the Larder Coordinator for the Lincoln Community Larder. We've been in existence for 25 years, coming up 26 now, and we these days we're in an annex building of the Lincolnshire YMCA in uh, central Lincoln. We have a lot of food here on the shelves, uh, a lot of it is donated, a great deal is donated by members of the public, schools, Harvest Festival time churches, and when we run out of certain items, then we, we buy it in. We, every week we're buying in milk. And then when we don't have a large amount of donations in our lockup, then we have a weekly order from Sainsbury's. Now, we pay full price for that, but Sainsbury's very kindly give us bread on a Friday. That is, um, is the shop baked stuff that only has a little bit of time left. So we get um, some lots of big boxes of of bread on a Friday from them. Um, how many clients do you have? Uh, it varies. We have seen a drop in demand of late. Um, these days we see about 30, 35 a week. Uh, we're open five days a week, uh, though three of those are only for people referred through it a um, local authority project called LCAS, Lincolnshire Community Assistance Scheme, uh, which is due to finish at the end of March. So when that finishes, there will be, we'll just go back to opening two days a week. Oh, well, we run entirely um, on voluntary contributions and volunteers run the place. There's no paid staff. Uh, yeah, we, we not only provide food, we have basic toiletries as well and some things like washing up liquid. Uh, we also try and have uh, fresh fruit and vegetables if possible. Um, you know, potatoes and carrots and all that sort of thing. Branston potatoes, they donate potatoes to us every week as well, which is, um, which is great actually. And then we go out and buy a few carrots and onions and apples and oranges, that sort of thing. So people have a little bit of uh, fresh stuff. They don't. They're not living entirely on tins. We give enough food for three meals a day for three days. For every person who is included in the voucher, people have to come to us with a voucher, and they get these from a whole variety of local agencies, such as Citizens Advice Bureau, Benefits Advice, Probation Service. Some schools have them. Some GPs have them. NACRO framework. A lot of the frontline agencies who help people out, um, health visitors have some 
uh, and uh, they give them the voucher. They have to make the decision on whether they think it is necessary to give someone a voucher and then they give it to them and come along here and we give them three days worth of food.